The red carpet rolled out as a very important guest rolls into Downing Street. The Trumps and the Mays on the steps of number 10, their last house call together. Two nations whose special relationship has endured through a procession of different leaders. But now, at a low ebb, these two allies drifting apart over Brexit, climate change, security. All that put aside at the podium today, both leaders vary on message. It's the greatest alliance the world has ever known. The discussions that we have had today are about the future of this most important relationship between the US and the UK. As the president described it, the greatest alliance the world has seen. But the relationship between these two now coming to an end, acknowledging that's still a hard moment for Mrs May. I have greatly enjoyed working with you. You are a tremendous professional and a person that loves your country dearly. Thank you very much. Really an honour. This no-deal president even praised Mrs May's Brexit deal. Perhaps you won't be given the credit that you deserve if they do something, but I think you deserve a lot of credit. I really do. I think you deserve a lot of credit. Meanwhile, down the road, the man who wants to take her spot in number 10 was addressing a crowd opposed to President Trump. And by our demonstration here today, we've shown just how determined we, all of us, are to achieve that better place and that better world. As you hold talks with the current Prime Minister, the leader of Her Majesty's opposition has been addressing a protest rally against your visit. What do you have to say to him? And is this man someone you could do a trade deal with? I don't know Jeremy Corbyn. Never met him. Never spoke to him. He wanted to meet today or tomorrow, and I, I decided that I would not do that. Uh, I think that he is, from where I come from, somewhat of a negative force. I think that uh, people should look to do things correctly as opposed to criticize. I really don't like critics as much as I like and respect people that get things done. But it won't be Mr Corbyn that he deals with next. What of the front runners to succeed Mrs May as Prime Minister? So I know Boris. Uh, I like him. I've liked him for a long time. He's, uh, I think he'd do a very good job. I know Jeremy, I think he'd do a very good job. I don't know Michael, but uh, would he do a good job, Jeremy? Tell me. <laughs> but whether it's Boris Johnson, Jeremy Hunt or Michael Gove, they'll all have to grapple with a president who wants to cut a trade deal on the NHS. Look, I think everything with a trade deal is on the table. When, you, when you're dealing on trade, everything's on the table. So NHS or anything else, or a lot, a lot more than that. But everything will be on the table, absolutely. Okay. Applause in the room, but alarm outside. Tory leadership contenders lined up to say the NHS would not be undermined by any post-Brexit trade deal. There is absolutely no way that the NHS will be on the table for trade talks with the United States or with anywhere else, for that matter, full stop. And if I'm Prime Minister, the NHS will never be for sale not on my watch. For the US president, this is a visit about pomp, pageantry and power too, and that no longer resides with Mrs May. Instead, he's looking at those who want to take centre stage in Brexit and in Britain, granting audiences to Nigel Farage and senior Brexiteers. But who will replace Mrs May and what it means for the special relationship? Well, everything's still on the table. Beth Rigby, Sky News, London.